morning of uh, knowing each other, we can finally get to work. <laughs> um, so this is a quick slide that just summarizes a bit uh, the, the project itself. The LEM, so it's 30 months project. It started on the 28th of February and it will last until end of July 2024. Uh, with Helen, we tried to postpone the, the start of the project to May, but it was actually not, not possible because, we, um, as you know, we submitted the project in um, last uh, May. So the project submitted in the pre, pre first previous round had to start on the 28th of February. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that we are already a bit late. Okay. Um, so we will need probably to, to catch up a bit. <laughs> um, what's the object? What's what's what what is about the project? No? The the aim is promoting an integrated democratic education approach into the European education system, in particular as a way of fostering life and citizenship competence in schools. Okay, so. Uh, we have a general objective that is promoting the integration of democratic education in, in European schools, and then we have specific ob objectives that we will guide um, uh, our activities uh, along the course of the project. Uh, specific objectives are connected with the professionalization of the teachers in the field of democratic education and allowing exchanges among the teachers or the of the staff, both of democratic schools and you know, the traditional or state school, and empowering teachers in promoting students' talents, motivation to learn, um, and uh, the competence, the life and citizenship competences, um, and also opening up the school to the external world, as we said, to allow connection from school to, to the real world outside. And well, the most, let's say, long-term objective is to promote change in the educational policy development. So a little bit of background of why we are doing this project. Um, Gabriel already discussed about that. So what I'm gonna give now is uh, perspective from sort of top-down policy perspective, starting from uh, the EU point of view uh, on um, what, what is the educational policies about, uh, um, yeah, what, what's the global educational policies, let's say, at, at the moment, and, and, and what, how is it changing? Um, this is part of the puzzle of why we are doing this project, because we started realizing that, you know, Everyone of you might be aware of whatever 21st century skills, more or less. Okay, so from the 1995, a lot of uh, um, academics, institute, organization, the most famous is the media, the OECDC, started thinking about okay, but in this fast changing world, what are actually the competences of the student needs? Okay, because what is changing, school, school remains the same. So this is something that cannot work. So uh, we need to understand what are the competences for the future to allow our, our children to be adapted in an environment that is changing. <coughs> and those are actually the, those are the C's that um, uh, um, Derek was referring to. Um, so basically those are mostly the soft skills that we were considering. There is, of course, the literacy and the numeracy, but all the competences that are important to be adapted and happy in a future world are related to um, capacity to be critical thinking, communication, creativity, collaboration, growth mindset, and citizenship competences. Um, the EU is um, also working on this, <laughs> so taking all this, uh, you know, international knowledge and promoting it in in about in, in, in this education. So this, the last communication on, on 
key competence for lifelong learning um, promote more or less the same. So we still have literacy, but we have the importance of personal, social learning to learn competences, we have citizenship and the, the cultural awareness. So a lot of competences that are connected to not really um, just learning, just having the rational uh, you know, uh, notions, but also learning how to know yourself, know the others, and know how to be in the world. In particular, this is a very important framework. It's called the life competences. So those are all the competences that you enlist as an ability to reflect on yourself, manage to find information, being with others in a constructive way. And the competence of self-regulation, flexibility, well-being, empathy, communication are even beautiful. Um, similarly, in the, the, the EU created a framework for citizenship competences. So saying that it's fundamental that we have the, 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 the students have young has a, the ability to act as a responsible citizen and to fully participate, to be able to fully participate in civic and social life. Those are the essential knowledge as they need to know the, what are the contemporary global events, the awareness of the social and political movements, awareness of diversity. But in order to get this, they need to have this very important soft skill. So ability to engage with others, ability to co be committed to a public um, common goal, uh, and very many other important skills. However, when we started this project, we realized that the traditional education models are scarcely adapt to equip students with the 21st century skills, to the life competence, to the citizenship competence. But this is not only democratic schools or alternative uh, environments in education that say this, but if we read the EU reports, it's clearly stated that an innovative pedagogical experience is needed because at the moment we are not equipped to give our children the tools to be able to live happily in, in, the, in, in this life. Okay? So this is, in, in the EU report is really clear, but what is also interesting is, is to see the level of satisfaction of students in, in, in school and in their life that are really low, the level of satisfaction in job as well, you know? And, and also how students are, if students are feeling welcome in the school, the sense of belonging to the school and to the community. So all these considerations led us to create the project because we thought, yeah, we actually thought that Democratic education has um, all the possibility to actually provide an answer to, to those gaps. Um, I'm not going to talk about what's democratic education because it's already been explained a lot today. But then we will focus on basically a sort of three dimensions of democratic education. When I say methodology, it's not a method, it's just the, the dimension that we, we keep in mind when we're thinking about democratic education. Um, Gabriel spoke mostly about those two that are actually the characteristic of democratic uh, schools. So the first one is uh, this, the possibility of choosing what, what to learn, so the self-directed uh, uh, learning, the choice, the choice of deciding about <coughs> your, own, um, uh, your own path to, um, and the other level is the, the school level, so the participation and the co-creation of, of the school, um, the participation in, 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 uh, in the decision about the school management. Uh, so we have the learning level, the school level, and I added the community level, which I think is important in mostly all the democratic schools. And I wanted to make a point here that I think it's really uh, relevant to have this. So to really consider 
a school like a sort of um, like an open schooling approach where children are connected with with the local community and with, with an outside. Uh, so the school is only one part that enables them to teach. Um, so what is important is because why I'm saying this three dimension because while doing the uh, different activities we would keep in mind all these three and how the these three levels will connect. Okay, um, the partnership of the project. So we are ten partners. Eight of eight partners are here today. Um, from four countries. So Belgium, uh, in Belgium, Bulgaria, Estonia, and Italy. We have one democratic school and one uh, state school. Um, they did some, the university did send in the site of the We have the Growth School Group in Brussels, and we also have the university from uh, La Laguna, so from Tenerife, Spain, that is part of the project. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to have a university as well um, that would be able to guide us in, in the uh, more in the methodological part of the research, but also to uh, be able to um, strengthen the scientific part of, of our uh, of the job we, we are doing. Um, and yes, and we are supported by um, an advisory board of four person um, that are there to, to help us if any concern raised, if uh, we are in a critical moment or if we don't know what to do. Um, so you virtually met Debbie today and Gabriel is, uh, is here with us. Uh, we have Tom, Tony Simon from the uh, University of Heidelberg, um, Germany. Uh, he, he works in the Institute for School Pedagogy and Education. Elementary School Didactics. Um, his speciality is uh, research on inclusive and democratic education, and he just published a, a book on, on, on this. Uh, and then we have um, Jakob Hecht, uh, Maggi, uh, which you already mentioned. Um, Jakob Hecht is uh, one of the pioneers of democratic education. He founded the first is the democratic school in Israel that now has more than 400. Uh, students like children uh, and um, so yes it's a real state system and it seems to me if I may yeah. it seems that one of the teachers of that school is now is the uh, minister of education in Israel okay. so just okay. big movement grow up yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so those are like our guardian angels <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we will do, we will work on, on some what we call project results, so that the, the, the core activities uh, of the we have four activities that we will see later. Um, in any um, so uh, the school group led by Ellen is the coordinator and the leader of one of the activities, the project was up three. For every activity there is one person that um, for every project result, there is one um, school organization that coordinates. So uh, the uh, school group is coordinated the project result three. Uh, both schools coordinate the project result one, one. Uh, this is this in any case. Uh, but all partners contribute to every phase of the project. That's important. Uh, we will travel. We will not only work, we will also travel. Um, we think uh, that it's important that we visit each other, we visit the different schools and we should have to have a um, moment in, in presence. Um, we will travel to translational project meetings but also to um, uh, learning activity in, in Sofia. Uh, we will organize uh, like conferences and then we will disseminate the project results. But this will be discussed tomorrow about this. Um, so how is the project structure? <coughs> the pro
project is divided into four main, um, it's called project results, so there are main blocks of activities. Okay, so, uh, there's something, oh, this, um, so this is the first part of the activity, it's uh, a research report, okay, so from February until October, we will spend time in working on, on, a, on a research. Um, this part uh, is coordinated by both schools. At the end of, so the research report, um, um, at the end of the research report, we will have a phase of teacher training from November until July. Um, then we will create an online platform um, in which we will put all the training materials and other things. And finally, we will create guidelines and policy recommendations. So this, <laughs> everyone has this, you don't have to read, just to remind you that all the project is uh, you can find every detail of the project in this Gantt chart. Everyone has access to it. So if you miss any, yeah. I want to ask, is it like a solid rock? Mm -hmm. uh, can't change anything any, anymore. I thought that our, our uh, uh, visit to What's our that? place is in November, but it's so dark and so it's like gloomy in November. I think those are, yeah, we can, we certainly, these things we can change. We can oh, yes. Change. Cool. Yes, oh, we, we cannot change the object of the project. So every time you have a question, you can refer to this chart or of course calling me as a woman. But here, this chart explains the different activities. Mm? So this is with the research report, and this is every month, and this is all sub, you know, sub activities according to the Okay, so everything is so first activity, second, third, and fourth. Yeah. So the per, the first project result is the research report that we will start shortly. Uh, what's the what's the objective of of this um, of this part of the project? Um, is to realize a research on the nowadays application and development of democratic education in the schools. Um, we object both to divulging democratic education, um, but also to identify what are the needs, okay? both in terms of democratic schools and in terms of state schools. So it's important that we, in this case, we can really collect all the, the questions, the issues that, that we have. Um, why? Because uh, all the needs that we will define, we will try to answer to those needs in the second phase, in the, in the training. Okay. <coughs> so how, uh, what we are going to do during the research? Uh, there is going to be one first phase in which we will create the, the methodology of research. Um, then we will have a desk research, um, so basically um, can be a research on your computer, but mostly then we will discuss about this later on. Uh, we might do some interviews to the other democratic school or state school. Uh, we, have, we will create two focus groups with uh, democratic school and state school, so we can have round uh, online in which we can uh, discuss all whether what are the, the, the questions at stake, how things are going, what, what things need to be overcome, etc. And also we can um, uh, verify the results of, of this first part of the research in the focus group. Um, we will also create what is called a community mapping tool. Uh, it's when we refer to the third level of democratic education, so the opening up to the community. We want to, um, to create a sort of document um, 
that allow every school to reflect on what are the actors outside my school that I can connect to, what are the other possible uh, organizations or um, what are the uh, you know, university, business or whatever, uh, local shops that I can connect to and, and, and enter in contact with. Finally, we will create a research report um, that will collect all the results um, of, of the different um, uh, methodological approach that, that we, we used. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think the working days for everyone, uh, every organization, you can find, of course, the different working days for, um, for in, uh, in, the, in the budget that we gave you. Those are an estimation of the working days. Doesn't mean that that we have those fixed working days for every project results. That's an estimation made. It might be that for one project result we need more. It might be that for another project result we will need less. So it's, it's really an, an estimation. And I will explain tomorrow how we are going, going to keep track of these yeah. working days. Uh, <coughs> So once we have our, um, we have done our research, we hope to come up with uh, uh, a lot of um, questions and needs that we can translate in trainings. Uh, so uh, the the idea is um, is to have a training that uh, we aim to support teachers and facilitators in, in the in developing uh, their teaching methods in. The, in the, their school, uh, inspired by uh, democratic education principle. Uh, the structure of the training might follow the, the three levels that I say, so the student level, the, the, the school level, and the community level. That's very flexible, that's what we wrote in the application, but again, um, it's, uh, it, it will depend a lot on the research, uh, how we will structure the training. So according to uh, what we discuss together, what are the needs, uh, we will then design the training accordingly. Um, the training will be composed by uh, online modules. Um, the training will be designed by all of us. Uh, of course, the democratic school will have more working days to prepare the, the training. Um, and then we will all meet in, uh, sorry, I, didn't, I forgot one important thing. The, this part will be coordinated by um, Community for Democratic Education. Uh, and so we will all meet then in Sofia to, um, once the training will be finalized, to um, to test it all together, means to see like all the different modules how they work, and so we will have the chance to then, in, ca in case, modify the uh, the content uh, before uploading in uh, uh, online and so uh, uh, have it uh, uh, available for for everyone. Yeah. So uh, at the end. Um, as I said, uh, when the training will be ready, um, this, it will be published online. And so the project result tree is really related to how to, um, to create an online platform that will allow the visibility of this training, but not only. Um, we would really like to create a sort of uh, online center where we can have uh, different materials. Um, so this part, um, this project result is coordinated by the school group. And so the idea is to have this, uh, this platform where we could have the uh, training online open for everyone, a sort of knowledge center where we could upload all the documents that we found on, on uh, democratic education, all the materials that are interesting interesting um, and it's a sort of um, also agora where everyone that attends the training can then um, chat with the others and try to find uh, maybe answer to questions that uh, has so 
so that we can, uh, like, people can remain in contact and have also um, a place uh, of references when when they have a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, now Eudec has uh, as an online platform where um, democratic school can go and ask for um, advices. Um, but in, in this case, I think it will be relevant because it could be open also to uh, more traditional state schools that are trying to implement democratic education and might face the same uh, problems. So they might, after doing the, the training, they might chat or we ask for advice. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so that's the third project result. That we, um, we are already in October 23. And then we have the final one, um, the final, the four project results are the guidelines. Uh, this project result is led by the uh, University uh, of um, La Laguna, Tenerife. Um, the objective of this, um, this project result is to outline guidelines and recommendations to scale up, scale up the use of democratic education on a different level. The idea is to, um, after two years of working on, on, on this project, um, we want to, um, to write uh, um, a document that can outline what are the preconditions to implement a democratic schools, what are, what are the, what are the steps that needs to be taken? So those are the guidelines for in general, but also what are once once we have the final the general guidelines, how can we apply those general guidelines on a national level? Because we have seen that um, that at the national level we have different law, we have different um, educational system. So a second. Um, work will be done in transferring these general guidelines into more tailor-made guidelines for, for, the, um, for the nation, on the national level. And then finally, uh, we aim at writing the policy recommendations, so more for, for policy makers, more uh, on a national or European level, uh, trying to uh, advocate for the, um, the use and of, uh, of democratic education approaches um, and uh, hopefully to try to foster change in, in, uh, in, in the broad um, educational uh, uh, system of future. So this is the last project result. Do you have questions about the activities, the different four projects results? What was the Those are the mobilities. Um, maybe we can just move. I don't know if I may just comment very quickly that it's, for me it's interesting because uh, the University of La Laguna is on the same island as us. It's a pity that they couldn't come. But it's interesting because we as a free democratic school just started to get contact with the authorities, uh, inspector knocking on our door, so we will see which process opens up there for our project. And we are already in contact with the colleagues from La Laguna and they shown a very great uh, disposition Disposition to, to collaborate with us, but it's interesting then if this situation, our concrete situation of our school with La Laguna and this project, talking about policy recommendations, yes. if this together gets somehow uh, like usable in, in our legal reality. So, just to comment that, is that, that there is a real life background on this yes. with La Laguna with the legal situation with policy recommendations. But I think that's what is um, uh, really important in this project is that um, it's really real. I mean, <laughs> we are all, we are, we feel all that we need this and we want to do this because 
we felt uh, in, both in our education system um, that there are gaps, that there are needs, so, and, and, and it's now, and it's urgent. So, um, so I think this, this is a good motivation that <laughs> will, uh, will make us doing the things on time. Um, so we will have actually five PPM, so tra five traditional, traditional project meetings. I know, Ellen, if you would talk about this uh, tomorrow. Um, no, okay. we, we, can, we can discuss it now or we can do it tomorrow. Okay. So, uh, we have uh, the next mobility will be in Tenerife in October. Um, then, we will have um, um, five days in Sofia in April next year. Uh, where we will work on the um, on the training, we will test all the different models of the training. Um, then uh, we will uh, in June. Sorry, I cannot read. In June, I think it's starting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and a uh, historical and uh, theoretical overview of democratic education. Uh, it will include the objective of the research um, and the methodology, an explanation of why we decide based on this methodology to do the research. Um, and then uh, we will create some templates that will facilitate the work in the next uh, phases to like to gather the, the information in, uh, um, in, in uh, during the, um, the research. Um, so normally we were supposed to finish in March. <laughs> So I think uh, most realistically it's going to be May and June that we will work on, on that. Um, after that, every one of us, um, it's, uh, it's called to, uh, to do a document analysis. Uh, so the idea is to investigate what are the features, the benefits, the implications, the best practice of democratic education in every country. So in this case, we will kind of work per country, okay, to, to understand what, what the situation is in every um, country. And as said before, a particular focus will be put on, on the needs in terms of what are the needs of, in terms of knowledge acquisition. Um, uh, in, in, um, I think in this moment, Probably uh, the best way would be to create a questionnaire, so a sort of a series of, of questions, um, guiding questions that uh, we could send uh, in every country to both to democratic school and state school to gather information. So we could see in this phase for, for the democratic schools, okay, what are the, the challenges in your country? Um, uh, how many democratic schools are, how it's going, and at same, the same time the state school are, um, why are you interested in it, do you think it's feasible uh, to put in place, what, what are the, the, the competences that you need in terms of um, And once you gather all the information, um, you will just fill uh, the template that, that we will give you uh, during the, um, that we have prepared in the previous phase, okay, in the, in the, in the okay. um, yeah, I think, uh, so what we would look at in this part is overview of democratic education in every country, what it is, what's the story, what's the present situation, what are the challenges and needs, uh, what are the needs, the constraints, how is it to be improved, etc. Um, and is democratic education practice in any state school? Yes, no, why? How could be practiced? What are the, in, in the, the needs? Uh, maybe success stories, best practices. Um, this, uh, again, the deadline, it was supposed to be done in April and May. Um, so most realistic it could be June and July. So yes, but we are close to July, yeah. so I think maybe that's it. Yeah. So this we need to yeah. see how we can adapt with the with the time here. Yeah. So but we we foreseen like two months. Mm -hmm. so we'll just see how yeah. Yes. Now our teachers are really um, not reach we cannot reach our teachers, so we don't yeah. want to reach our teachers. Mm -hmm. So we can start back in January or last day of uh, August. I don't know how it's in the other countries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, then we just know to post I think uh, mm -hmm. this is also to see with the national agency what's, what's the level of flexibility in uh, um, I think we always can extend the projects mm -hmm. um, if we are, if we cannot. Um, mm -hmm. Do it in the short period, but we um, mm -hmm. will see what what. Yeah. I mean, we are working with schools, so it's impossible that we yeah. you know um, that we work during during summer. So it's a little bit to do what we can. Um, so after this phase, uh, we will have another research phase. That's one of the focus groups. 
um, the objective of the focus group is to discuss the potentialities, limits and needs of the democratic education in schools, uh, but also to review the results of the desk research, so the research done before. So we could somehow um, uh, double check and uh, the, 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 um, the outcomes of the previous cases in, in this case. And also, because the desk research was on a national level, this one is going to be all on a uh, European level, so on a cross-country. Uh, uh, and it will also allow for exchanging among the school participants, the school uh, in different countries. The content is the creation of two online focus groups. Does everyone know what is a focus group? So the first group is just a guided discussion. So imagine now, we all meet together. It's, it's a methodology that it's always often used in like sociology or um, the political science, but also in marketing sometimes. So it's just to gather opinion around a group of people, um, in the, not in, a, uh, in an open discussion that is also a bit guided. Okay, so you ask a question to a group of people and you let the people talking about this, but there is always a sort of facilitator that guides the discussion. So what we will do in this focus group is actually um, uh, taking the outcome of the, of the, of the pre previous phase of the research and discuss this um, one time in one focus group with 10 participants from democratic schools and another time with 10 participants from um, uh, uh, state schools. So we will reanalyze all the results to we see uh, if there are commonalities, if there are, if also we see um, <coughs> that we get the same answers also for all different answers. Um, the, the results of the discussion will also with the uh, gathered in a template that will be given you uh, after the, the now the first phase of the creation of the methodology. Um, is it clear? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there will be the two yeah. groups. Mm -hmm. These focus groups will be two, more or less. One of ten people from the democratic yeah. school and one of ten people from the state Yeah. Once again, yeah, this this is what this is what has been written, and again, we might find interesting to invite uh, other external experts in the focus group. We might find interesting to take another perspective to the focus group, and so we, we, we of course we, we stick what we we we, we promised in, in the in the project, but we also um, will work on what we will happen in, in the research. No, so we will see uh, what are what, um, yeah, what, 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 what lens we need to do the focus group and what we need to ask um, to one or the other group. Yeah. And this sort of will be after that the uh, boss and the uh, Universidad de Alamuna uh, joins, so it will be like August, to be honest, from the like, uh, time with the July or So normally it's July, but once again now it's it's summer, so we need to see with the schools if it's possible uh, or if we have to postpone. Mm -hmm. okay. Then before the meeting in uh, January? Yeah, the idea is actually to, uh, we, we set up a meeting uh, after every project results end. So that's the idea. So when we meet, we review all, all, all that we have done. So the idea of the next project, the, of the for the next TPM, it was actually to revise the, all these project results. Uh, then uh, we didn't know that the national agency required, so they told us on the 20th of February that the project was accepted and we were supposed to start on the 28th of February. So, you know, there's, I think there is margin there to, yes. to, to be flexible and, and, and not to start with the, you know, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yes, then the other, the, the, yeah, the fourth uh, activity in, in, the, in this research is the community mapping. 
uh, aimed at identifying what are the, the external stakeholders of every of our schools that are interested in, in uh, developing cooperation with the school and so in, in <coughs> opening up the school uh, to a community level. So every part and we identify uh, like local agents might be uh, parents in civil society organizations, local business, uh, social enterprises, uh, cultural center, libraries, interested in cooperating with the school. And we will gather the results in, in, a, in a template that also we will prepare. Um, and the relationship with this, um, this external actor will be this also the focus on of the, the training. So we will see how can we cooperate with external actors. So trying to give advice to school on how to um, not be locked in, in the four walls. Um, and also we would like to then use it also for the guidelines afterward to actually um, also explain to external uh, community how it's important that they interact with the school so not only that the school goes looking for external actors but also the other mm -hmm. way around um, yes mm -hmm. i think we might make uh, from july we have to wait end of september it's more realistic yeah and yeah. it's still in it's still before the tpm in uh in the mm -hmm. so here yeah, I just uh, copy pasted the deadlines yeah. that we had yeah. and I think it's important that we discuss with the schools, uh, you know, mm -hmm. necessities, with the holidays and, and with what the national agency will require us. Maybe we can remake a, a plan saying, you know, to, to readjust the deadlines. Yes, but the, the deadlines are not for the national agency is not going to look at the deadlines, just at the deadline at the end. And mm -hmm. in the in the middle we have to make the, the report. Mm -hmm. So I think we there we have to see uh, that we have finished what we supposed to finish mm -hmm. more or less. Um, but they they not gonna make a, something about it that we change uh, mm -hmm. July to, to September. So maybe, uh, Ellen, what we can do is uh, make a planning uh, in, in the next week yeah. and uh, that is a more realistic one and we can send to everyone so... Yes. Yeah? Okay. So we don't see July and we are scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, is it finished or we have another screen? Okay. Um, all the results will be gathered in a research report that will uh, have the objective of systematizing the results but also to raise awareness uh, and spread the knowledge uh, about democratic education and as well identify the needs in terms of competences to be developed. <coughs> um, the report will be written in English and then every partner has to translate the report in its own language, which is very important because this will allow the fluidity of the report in, in, in the national um, country. Um, the idea we had is that um, from the report we could also uh, um, publish an academic article with the collaboration of University of La Laguna with the University of Hull. Um, so we, if we can we can reach more um, an academic audience, uh, I think it would be also interesting. Oh uh, yes, how will be disseminated? Is what this I already talked about the idea of creating um, adapting the research to a scientific article. Um, and the idea that this research can be spread around to, to really make everyone aware of, of the work we have done, but also raise awareness in, more in the educational organization level about, um, about what we have been doing, and the idea also to, to policy makers. And tomorrow we'll discuss about dissemination and also how, how can we uh, raise awareness about the work we, we are doing and communicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's
Or the energy, yeah. or the energy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 